Someone so told me that what if what if they're around their family and they don't want to spend money right now because it's the holidays? Like if that's what you believe, trust me, you'll run into it. If you look for what's wrong, you'll find it. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it's like people are in people are habitually in a um, money spending mindset right now. So it's like it kind of works the opposite, where it's like because it's like when you're spending money, it kind of gets easier to spend more money, right? Um, and then like when you're saving money, it's like. To, to make a spend or a purchase when you're in that mindset is actually more difficult. It's momentum. So, yep. Yeah, it's momentum. And so like whatever direction someone's going, it's just going to be easier to move them further in that direction. Um, and so when people are like throwing down thousands of dollars on like, like for them to spend a hundred dollars on, on something that's actually going to like protect the family that they're spending it on. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like a layup. Um, so two questions about that. So, I'm not sure if you're comfortable discussing this, but yeah. what does this look like from a deposit standpoint in your bank? Like right in $46,000? Right. So, so far, I mean, for this month, I can check on my app. My app, my bank doesn't usually post it till the following month, but I mean, I've had a surplus of about $20,000 if I was going to ballpark it. And, but the thing with me too, is I'm not trying to like get stuff like drafted immediately. Like, I don't care if, if they need to wait until the first to draft it. I don't care if they, like, whatever their bill cycle is, you know what I mean? Whatever they're used to doing, I'm just gonna try to squeeze it in there because then it's it's gonna stay on the books longer, right? As opposed to like- Doing staying. what's best for them, not what's best for you. I like that, exactly. not, not scarcity, but abundance. Exactly, so it's like, there's a few of them that are approved and they're all good to go and it's gonna start on the 1st of January. Um, but I mean, even the week that I wrote 30,000, that week alone, I made 10 grand. Um, and then, but I mean, it's, it's all kind of like, you don't really, when you're in the flow, you don't even like notice it or like pay attention to it. No, I, like, look yeah. at You've got enough activity. You're not worried about it. I think this is how most people should look at this or perceive the industry. Like as long as you're sitting in front of enough people, which just real quick, like ballpark, how many people do you think you had to sit in front of to write 46 grand? So... I would say 30, 32 people, somewhere in that. Good. That's incredible, man. That, that is incredible, right? So it's like normally I would say if someone's going to like try to like hit 46 grand and be like, okay, sit, 80, front, yeah, sit and go sit in front of 80, 90 people. Exactly. That's what I tell a new agent to do. Definitely. Uh, if someone's seasoned, I'd be like, okay, well, sit in front of at least 46 people. Because if you're sitting on 46 appointments, like how many of those are going to be um, multiple policies, right? And then of course, you're not going to close all of them, right? Like it's just, there's, you're going to run into factors. I've sat with people that are broke. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? It's like, they're actually like, they're in the negative already. And I'm oh, great. Like, it makes no sense. And like, that's where it separates good agents from great agents who will still try to force a sell that they know is going to get charged back. Right. Like, why even fuck yourself like that? But it's right. like if more people had a perspective like this, like I'm just going to do what's best for the client and I have 40 people waiting for me and it's realizing you're creating quality outcomes for yourself before you even go into a sales call and mm -hmm. that brings posture. That, be, right. that gives you the ability to hold the frame and say, look, if you just want to lollygag, I'll go sit with the next person. Right, right, it's exactly. It's really that simple. Uh, it really is. And it's like when you get into that flow of it, like when you're just like doing a lot of it, you like you're not bent on the sale. Right. It's like a week into the month. I already had like 20,000. So it's like I, you start to like sit on appointments and like you really aren't invested in whether it goes through or not. And that's really when like you can't help but close on everything. Cause that, like, that's because your focus is in the right place. You have the, li you literally get your mental attention back. You get your attention back because it's so spread out. Well, I have to make bills. That means I have to make this sell. I and mean, if I don't make the sell, then I'm depressed. Like it, right. your attention spread out between 10 different things. Exactly. And it's like when you have like money only solves money problems, but I've been, I've had money and I've not had money. I'll choose having money every time because <laughs> being broke with problems is 10 times worse. Sucks, dude. It's like you get all the clarity back and you can truly just go into a flow state where it's just like like the athletes who just as soon as they get on the court, it's instant. It's, it, you're staying in state. Yeah, you're staying in state, right. That is, I, and I think that's truly the only thing you have 
100% control over is your mental capacity, what you choose to focus on. What does Tony Robbins say where focus goes, energy flows? Right. Like where you put your focus, I promise you, you you'll get it. You'll get what you're asking for out of life. Life will give you what you're asking for just to see if you can handle it. And that's a crazy thing too. It's like for this month, at least, it's like my average application is like, what, close to 2000 or something like that. Right. These aren't these aren't like IULs. This is all like mortgage protection shit, dude. Yeah, so, simplified like, issue, which is my favorite because I don't want to wait a month to get paid and I don't want to wait a month to get them protected. Right. So one thing I will ask you about this like size of business or these policies, like how long have you been in the industry now? A year and a half? Year and a half, yeah. Are you not scared of writing like, do you get nervous when you write bigger policies? No, because I'm not focused on that. Well, it's like, even like, I'm not trying to write a big policy ever. You know what I mean? That's never the goal. The goal, you know, and it's like, that's the irony with it too. Because it's like when that stops becoming your goal and when you're genuinely just like not thinking about yourself at all, right? Like you're just thinking about the client. And you like, remove oh. yourself as the variable that can be blamed why, correct? Exactly, exactly. And when you remove yourself as the variable, sometimes you're the variable that is actually like trying to get smaller apps because you're scared of something, not because it's best for the client, not because it's most valuable for the client. And it's like, obviously you can't write massive apps for a client who's strapped for cash. So there is like that variable, which like as far as like how wealthy the person you're sitting in front of is, which maybe you can't always control that. But like, but if the value is there for them and that's what they want to do, right? If like somebody wants a hundred thousand dollar whole life policy, then I'm going to go look for the most competitive hundred thousand dollar whole life policy.